guest is a number one New York Times best-selling author. He has just released his next book, Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics. Just like this girl should be the subtitle. Um, he comes to us multiple times a week. He is the co-anchor of ABC's Nightline and the weekend edition of Good Morning America. Please welcome a first-timer to our show, Dan here. Pick it up. Your wife has great taste. His soup feels like butter. You could argue she has great taste in everything but husbands. Oh. I'm kidding. Uh, listen, I'm sure that our crack staff here has told you. I'm a bit of a, I don't know if I'm a fidgety skeptic, but I'm frightened of meditation, let's say. I, I did get that memo. I'm a loud, I'm a loud person. It's like why I never go to yoga. I feel like I'm gonna get kicked out of class. You toured this, you really went on a journey, like literally, you took that book to, eight, was it 18 states for 10% Happier? So I wrote that book, it came out about four years ago and it was my story. I, I told the story of being in war zones and having a panic attack and then how I embraced meditation and what it did for me on, in a very competitive job. And I, I think naively thought that when people read the book that they would hurl themselves into the lotus position and start meditating. <laughs> Imagine my surprise, that didn't happen. <laughs> and I think we're now at a point in our culture where meditation is less weird than it used to be. However, there are millions of people who want to do it and aren't doing it. And so that's why I wrote the follow-up book, Meditation for 50 And that's why Skeptic. you adapted the app, right? You've developed right. a kind of a how-to yes. for 10% Happier. How does the app work? The app works that you download it for free and we teach you how to meditate with a sense of humor. No pan flutes, uh, no, <laughs> no egregious use of the word namaste. It's very down to earth. We, we, we have a lot of no scientists. No emojis like this. None of that. Um, if you want that, we can, we can work something out for you on the side. But we, in fact, we have a, we have a special uh, meditation for viewers of your show, which will help you meditate while cooking, which is gonna really? go up today. Well, first of all, I feel like when I'm cooking, I am in a, a more meditative state. People would be shocked at how quiet I am when I'm in there. <laughs> I think it can be, those type of, types of activities are really healthy, although I'm not sure that it is meditation. I mean, one of the things we tackle mm -hmm. in this new book is a lot of people come up to me and say, I don't need to meditate because I run or because I cook or I knit or I play with a, my pet or you do or something that's soothing to you. Those are soothing and excellent and I, I have no, nothing against them. But meditation is something specific where you are having this collision with the voice in your head, your inner narrator, the voice that chases you out of bed in the morning and is yammering at you all day long. Meditation is systematically putting you in touch with that voice so that over time, it doesn't own you. And that is the value of this practice.